So in the Hebrew it means pleasure. Eden is generally referred to as a paradise by scholars because of the Hebrew word paradek is translated orchard. And so many places in the Bible we see where there's gardens. Now it's amazing that Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden. They had their trial, their test, which they failed miserably. But Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he was struggling with his tests. He was saying, let the cup pass. If it's in the other way, Father, you know, do it. And he kept struggling with this test. And finally he said, nevertheless, not your will, but let my will be done. Because this purpose I came was to give my life as a ransom for men. So everybody's going to have their garden. This is the question I have for you. Will the garden win or will you win? Amen. Because the garden can either pump you or produce you. Amen. You're going to either get, you're going to either succumb to the temptation of the garden and you're going to lose your identity and you're going to forfeit your purpose or the garden can be a place of strengthening you to step out in your purpose. That's right. So what are you going to let your garden do in your life? I can't stay there. Go to chapter 3, verse 7, Genesis. Many people have failed because they succumbed to the voices in the garden. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And the thing about the garden, you were there alone even though there's people with you. Mm -hmm. yes. Jesus had Peter, James, and John. Mm -hmm. And he said, pray. Pray with me. And every time Jesus came back, they were asleep. Sleeping. So that lets me know that when I'm in my garden, I may have people yes. around me, but the truth of the matter is I'm going to have to go through this for myself. Yes. Because this has always been my question. The Messiah was at his greatest hour. He was being tormented and he was at the greatest point of stress in his life that his capillaries in his head began to burst and his sweat began to turn to blood. And this man is sweating blood and he's grieved and he's vexed to the point where he violently falls down on his on his chest and interceding and the people that's supposed to be his right hand men and lift up his arm his intercessors are somewhere asleep when he's going through the darkest season of his life and so in your garden you're going to have to make decisions by yourself that will affect those around you let me say this again you're going to have to make the decision by yourself but it's going to affect those around you Jesus' decision not to succumb to the voices in his head and even his flesh trying to lead him another way, by him not succumbing to it, it affected everybody that would ever be born. Are y'all here? Verse 7. I'm not going to read. You know the story that, that the snake talked to Eve and told her that God just mad because if she eat it, she's going to be like him and he know her eyes will be open. They'll be like God knowing good and evil. Eve ate the fruit. Not only did she eat, she gave it to her husband. <coughs> the decision in the garden. Verse 7, we pick up. It says, then the eyes of both of them were what? Open. Open. And they knew that they were what? Naked. Naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loincloths. Jesus had on a loincloth. They put on loincloth. If you really understand the Bible, types and shadows, you'll see the similarities with the, what the first Adam went through and what the last Adam went through. Mm -hmm. they, they covered their neck as he became naked. Y'all yeah. mm -hmm. understand that? Yes. Because they were always naked, always. They, they, they never had clothes on, but the glory of God covered them, so they didn't see their nakedness. They just saw the, the Shekinah, the, the manifested glory of God. So when the glory lifted, they saw their nakedness, so they made Lowing claws of fig leaves to cover themselves. Yes. Jesus wore a robe that was made out of one stitch. When they got ready to crucify him, they took his robe off. Yes. So they covered their nakedness to try to hide from God. Jesus exposed himself to please God. Yes. Can't stay there. When they saw that they sold fig leaves together and made themselves loin coverings, verse 8. They heard, say heard, heard, the sound of the Lord walking in the cool of the garden, in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord, God, among the trees of the garden. Verse 9. Then the Lord God called to the who? Man. Man. Oh, that was weak. He called to who? Man. The man or Adam. Men, are you getting this? Yes. He's not going to look for your wife. 
He gonna look for you. Get you man up and do what you were supposed to do. God is looking for the man to step up and to do what he's supposed to do. Because if the man get in place, the house will line up. Let me say that again. If the man get in place, the house will line up. In prayer tools, and that was what we got in prayer. The men were on our heart. God said that the men in this house are going to be responsible for getting this ministry to the next level. If the men don't step up, we'll be in a place of limbo. And he said the women have done well and done as much as they can do. But it is time for the men, the Adams in this house, to step up and start putting up every other interests before God. Amen. Where are you, Adam? Where are you? Man, you say you're a man where you are. Where you at? Where are you? Okay. Listen to what the man said. He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked. So I hid myself. And we know that God asked him who told him he was naked. But we're, since we're talking about divine position, look what happened. They were in position because they were in God. They touched and ate something God told them not to eat. And by them partaking of the tree that they shouldn't have partook of, it got them out of position. How do I know they was out of position? Because God had to look for them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. That's good. But when God has to look for you, when you can't be found in the presence anymore, mm -hmm. you know you're out of position. Yeah. And they were out of position because where God used to show up in fellowship with them, now he's looking for them because they're no longer in the presence. They're in the flesh trying to cover it up and manufacture a covering that cannot hide the fact that they have disobeyed God. And we try to manufacture covering to try to fool people like we still obeying God. You can't wear a tie nice enough. You can't wear a dress nice enough. Your head can't be big enough to say that I'm in the presence of God. Because people that are in the presence of God, there is just something on you where other people can say, man, they walk with God. Yes, 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 yes. And God is asking the question, where are you, Adam? And he said, I hid myself because I was naked and afraid. Yes, you were, but you really hid yourself because you were out of position. And because you are out of position spiritually, it's going to manifest your position in the natural. And he said, I, I really hid because I knew I was out of position. Why are you out of position? Because of broken fellowship. Broken fellowship would cause you to be out of position both spiritually and naturally. And so when God show up, he's looking for you because he's not, you're not where he left you. He dropped you off in the glory, and when he came back, he expected you to be in the glory. And because you have been distracted by stuff you see, he can't find you, so now you got to call your name. Where are you? Because you're no, longer, you're no longer divinely positioned, now you're in a place that you chose for yourself. And it's amazing that broken fellowship will make us go to a place that we choose to hang out at until God show up. And God said, that's unacceptable. I expect you to be in the glory where I drop you off at. And that's many times why people prayer lives don't go past the ceiling. Because we've got to come back and start the routine all over again. Because we understand that prayer is fourfold. we got outer court, inner court, holy place, most holy place. And so instead of just showing up at the most holy place, worshiping God in the glory, we don't allow so many things to slip. And so many things we have embraced and so many things we've entertained that we got to start all the way back out here in the outer court again. Lord, forgive me for thinking the thoughts about the cuss out. And Lord, forgive me for not doing that. And Lord, forgive me for taking the safe land work. I know it might be in the And then we make it in here. Lord, I worship you, but I still feel bad because I saw the safe land work and I about cussed the co-worker. But Lord, I worship you. And then we're going to the place. Lord, I'm just praying for all my brothers and sisters. And then by the time you get us back behind the veil, you're sleeping. You sleep. <laughs> Lord, I love you. <laughs> Why? Because you have had to work so hard to get back to the place that you left from. Mm. How do you leave from the place of glory and then go back about your business and then you show back up every day in prayer? You got to start in the outer court. Mm. How much time is being wasted repenting for stuff that we should have been delivered from? Amen. Why, why we can't just show up and say, Father, I love you? 
Father, I worship you. Why we got to come up with a laundry list of stuff we're repenting for and we should have been delivered from it? You should have been delivered from cussing people out. You should have been delivered from stealing staplers and ink pens from work. You should have been delivered from listening to stuff you had no business listening to. Looking at stuff your eyes have no business beholding. You should be delivered. That's Christianity 101. And we got to repent from all this junk and then it, it really affects you can't be no true intercessor when you keep praying for yourself. Amen. Repent all the time. How are you going to intercede for nations and peoples and systems and, and for the kingdom of God to advance when you always out of position? You got to be in position to be effective in your prayer life. Thank you. Thank you for that too. Amen. I appreciate that. It's getting quiet. I prayed. No, you didn't. You spent time repenting. You wasn't in prayer. I prayed for an hour and a half. Yeah, you repented for an hour. You can't even count that. Why? Because we're not delivered. We're asking God to 